use of what I am doing in the uh, time now. At first, we started by doing in this, uh, going on the same steps of the percutaneous surgeries that were being done for some time before uh, the introduction of the endoscope to the spine. Uh, by that time, the endoscopic, uh, the, sorry, the percutaneous approach to the spine was mainly uh, uh, to the posterolateral uh, angle of the of the disc through the the what's called the safe convenience triangle. Uh, this triangle here, and uh, by this approach from about uh, 10, 12 centimeters from the midline posteriorly, you go in a trajectory of 4, 35 or 45 degrees to the posterolateral postural angle of the, of the disc in this safe triangle, which is bound by the, the traversing nerve root, the theca, and sorry, um, I have to go back. Yes, the, the traversing root, the theca, the caudal uh, uh, vertebrae. This is the, 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 the safe triangle that we, you go by your guide wire hitting the, the, this angle. Uh, in this video, I'll show what we used to do by that time. You go in the, in, through this approach under fluoroscopic guidance to the angle and you proceed to the, to the center of the disc. Then you start injecting a dye to do discography to verify the level and to verify the, the symptoms are related to this level. You then start uh, introducing the dilators over the guide wire uh, and the, uh, uh, the trefine to widen the, the, if you need to, to widen the foramen to reach the, uh, the post-lateral angle like this uh, comfortably. After doing, uh, doing enough dilatation and removing the dilators and the guide wire, you introduce the endoscope, which then you, you go inside the disc. You don't go outside the disc. Here you go from inside the disc space, as you'll see in the next view. When you go by the endoscope, as you can see here, you're going inside the disc space and you start taking out the, the disc material from inside out. This, the, the, the idea of this approach by that time was to, in, uh, to reduce the, the intradiscal pressure and thus uh, 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 retracting the, the annulus from its pressure on the uh, nerve roots and the theca. Uh, you go on with uh, uh, removal of the disc material under uh, endoscopic uh, guidance, as you can see, until you deem that you have removed enough disc material from the, the disc. However, I abandoned this technique about three or four years later because of some reasons. First, you can't deal with rupture discs, which is actually, in my opinion, the main cause for operating on a lumbar disc is having a ruptured disc that's causing, that's it's not amenable for medical treatment or rest or anything. So in this technique, you are not able to deal with a ruptured disc. You cannot decompress properly the nerve root, especially if there is ligamentous or bony elements compressing the nerve root. And you, you are not able also to deal with spinal canine stenosis, whether bony or ligamentous. The other thing that's, that's really caused me to stop this technique is the high, very high instance of nerve root injury. Despite your very uh, well prepared and, and uh, monitored approach to the Cambian's triangle, there's also a possibility of having um, anatomical variants that would cause the nerve root to be in your way. And thus there was a very high unacceptable risk by up to 20% of cases that had some sort of uh, nerve root injury during the initial approach to the disc. And this caused me to look for something else. Uh, I then 
thought that it's better to go for a posterior midline approach because in, in the midline, if you go by the midline approach, you can go and operate on any level uh, with better visualization and protection of the neural elements and can deal with any type of disc collapse and the ability to deal with bony and ligamentous stenosis. Because in the posterolateral percutaneous uh, uh, approach, there were some limitations on uh, the, the level mass. For, ex uh, for example, you cannot, you cannot easily approach the L5S1 level, especially when you have a high iliac crest. By that time, uh, in 1977, there was the uh, in introduction, uh, simultaneous in, uh, introduction in the US and France of two endoscopic systems. And I thought that they uh, met the criteria that I thought would be better for operating on uh, the lumbar disc using the endoscope. They both make an artificial working cavity instead of working within a natural cavity. They take the cavity with them with the, uh, the, the, the either the, the funnel or the, the dilators to the disc material, to the, to the posterior elements of the spine. And they use, starting using very high resolution endoscopes, but that time was, it was a novelty with minimum soft tissue damage and having a panoramic view of the surgical site. Uh, the, the device of first, uh, I, the device I first used was the endospine system that was produced by stores and designed by uh, Distandu in, the, in France. Uh, the device is a conical having three tubes, one for the endoscope, one for aspiration, and uh, the largest one for the classical surgical instruments, especially the straight, uh, uh, straight uh, punches and the carisons to take out the bone and the disc material and the ligaments. A protective space is created by one, at one end of the tube by a special part of the device, which looks like a speculum. There's also an included nerve retractory. The endoscopic discectomy can be carried out under local epidural uh, general anesthesia, and the patient is placed in the knee chest position. In the next, that's the, the look of the funnel shape, and it's introduced through a skin incision and muscle separation, just paramedian, to the posterior uh, lamina, where you then uh, through the, the, the funnel, you, this is the view you see. You see part of the lamina and part of the ligamentum flavum. And using a carison ringer, you just take out the part of the lamina that's covering the, the exit of the nerve root and the, the uh, prolapsed disc. You, you, during the, the work, you have the, the endoscope coming from this tube. The Callison or the punch going from the other tube. There's the, the retractor for the nerve root. When you export the root, you just retract it by this uh, retractor. Uh, when you reach the disc, you can take it out piece meal by the, 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 the punches one by one. The, the major problem was, was with this technique is that you are, you are sorry, with this technique is that you are confined to just straight instruments. You cannot put um, curved instruments from it. You cannot take out the disc from the other side of the midline. It's very difficult to tilt the tube and get the disc from the other side. And you have actually uh, uh, an area of the disc material that is not uh, in your way, you cannot take out all of this disc. So when you have bilateral symptoms or more of a midline disc protrusion, it's very difficult to get it out with this technique. The other technique was the matrix system that was introduced by the Medtronic company in the US at the same time. And it's based on the uh, 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 sequential dilatation of the uh, uh, of the muscle 
It's, it goes uh, transmuscular. It doesn't, you don't do here uh, superiosa muscle separation, but you go transmuscular with the sequential dilators, starting with the guide wire and then the dilators until you reach your working tube and you hold it in, in place with a flexible uh, arm. You start by making a small incision about one and a, or one and a half centimeters from the midline at the level of the disc, the disc prolapse. And going with the dilators, you start separating the, the muscle from the back of the spine and introducing the, the dilators and the, the, the working tube here until at the end you introduce this in the endoscope and the working tube held by the detector at the back of the lamina. This is the view you see from the, the working tube when you have the lamina with the, this is the joint, the ligamentum flavum, you start by uh, separating the, the ligamentum flavum from the lamina and you take out the, the part of the lamina by the carison, it's the same as you do in any sort of microdiscectomy. And by tilting the tube, you can reach taking out bone to do some posterior decompression of the, of the spinal canal in cases of canalis sinus. I, st I, I, I went on working with this technique for, for both the, the end of spine or, and the sequential dilators techniques for, for a few years, but I was not totally satisfied with it. And in 2004, in the uh, World Federation uh, meeting in, that was held at uh, Marrakesh, uh, I introduced my, my technique, which I called the freehand endoscopic lumbar discectomy technique. Uh, in this technique, it's both simple and of, for low budget uh, uh, people, where you only need just a tube, a small tubular tube to protect your endoscope and you uh, depend on pieces of uh, gauze or, or uh, sponges or something like that to create a cavity to work. And I'll show you how I do this. A patient is put in the prone position as usual, and you verify the level with fluoroscopy. And then you make a small midline incision, incision about one and one and a half centimeter, between one and one and a half centimeter. And then you do muscle separation at this level. After you, after you separate the muscle, you insert your two rolled pieces of gauze, caudally and cephalically, caudally and cephalically, to create a small cavity between the two pieces of both dorsal to the, to the lamina. In this cavity, you introduce the tube for the endoscope, and beside it, from the right and left of the tube, you insert your uh, instruments without having to do full dilatation of the, of the muscles. Or, uh, then you can take out both the lamina and the disc with all your regular instruments that you use in microdiscectomy or in uh, any even uh, uh, naked eye discectomy. Uh, and this is how much disc you can take with this uh, technique in one. This is the uh, video for the surgery. As you can see, this is the lamina. And you start by taking using the, the carison ranger, you take out part of the lamina, you open up the ligamentum flavum by the dissector, you separate it from the uh, dura beneath it. Then you take by the ranger the part of the ligamentum flavum until you fully expose the, lam the dura and the root. And using a dissector and uh, suction tube, you dissect the disc. At the at lateral to the uh, root. Uh, sometimes you have a rupture disc like this one, and just push on it, and it comes out. And you take it out with the ranger. But uh, of course, most of the time you have to open up the the 
ligament, let's say the annulus, by either the, the dissector or by even a knife. After protecting the root and the theca by two pieces of cotton, codalian cephalic, as you can see here. <clears throat> then, using the, the punches, the straight and the curved up and curved down punches, you start evacuating the disc totally. And at the end of the surgery, you irrigate it and make sure that the, the uh, root and the theca is fully relaxed and pulsating, as you can see. Also, in using this technique, sorry, you can, as this is how much disc material you can take out in this technique. And this is the, the wound at the end of the surgery. These are some of the cases. These are the types of discs that we operate upon using this technique. Usually, and this is post-op. It's another one. And post-op surgery, post-op. That one, another post-op. As for the cases of uh, spinal canalization, segmental can spinal canalization, like this one, we, I developed also a an, an, an technique to uh, operate on these cases. I also go by the same, like the, the, what I do for the discectomy. But here, after opening the ligamentum flavum, I start by going medially on taking out the ligamentum flavum medially, 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 until they reach the contralateral side of the theca and expose the bell root on the other side by tilting my endoscope. Then I go to the epsilateral side to expose the nerve root on both sides of the, uh, of the exposure and creating a big cavity dorsal to the theca in here to eventually end up with a, a decompressed, fully relaxed, as you can see. Um, the other, another thing that I started to do for some time now is to do endoscopic surgery for far lateral and extra uh, foraminal, extra foraminal disc prolapse, as you can see here in this, in this case. Here, as you, as you might know, that in 1968, uh, uh, Wilsey we'll uh, described a postural approach to the spine, especially for cases of uh, uh, for fu fusion, and, uh, for fixation, and, and particular screws for fixation. And in his technique, he went paramedian in the potential space between the uh, multifidus and the longitudinous muscles. In this technique, it reaches, this, this potential space here is, uh, has an, its apex at the facet joint. While in, if you want to go to, to operate on the postrolateral, on, on uh, the far lateral disc or the foraminal disc, you need to go a bit lateral to the uh, transverse process of the caudal vertebra. If you go to the transverse process of the caudal vertebra, then you can reach the foramen from caudally. And this is the, 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 the safe uh, area of the foramen. So instead of going from, as Wilsey has, uh, has uh, described, from in the space between the longismus and the multifidus, you instead go a bit lateral from the space between the longismus and the uh, iliocostalis muscle. If you go from, from this space, you end up here at the junction of the transverse process and the, the base of the, uh, the facet joint. 
So if you go from this space, it's first a vascular space, even the, 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 the blood supply of the sacrospinalis comes actually in the space between the longismus and the multifidus. So in, on, on the other approach the, that I'm describing now, it's you go from between the multifidus and the ilicostalis, this is more of a, a vascular space. You reach the base of the facet and in junction with the transverse process. And from here, as I'll show, you go to the uh, foramen and take out your uh, foramen, uh, extra foramen. This is the, 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 this is the difference between the, the uh, different approaches to the lumbar disc. As you can see here is the midline approach between, actually it is between the two multifidi. And this is the Wilsey approach between the multifidus and the longismus. And here's my approach, the foraminal approach, which come, goes between the multifidus and the ilicostalis. You have also the, you can see for the enumeration, you have the lateral transoas approach and the anterolateral approach to the disc. When you, you, you do the, this approach, you, you create the, the space between the, as you see, uh, between the longismus and the, um, the ilicostalis, which is about uh, four or five centimeters from the midline. And you introduce the endoscope, as you can see, in this space, where you identify first the, the transverse process. And here's the base of the spinous process, and you start by dissecting just cephalically to the transverse process to expose the, the, the disc here. Sometimes you have to take a small part of the, of the transverse process and uh, the passage joint to expose the disc space here. And putting in mind that you have the traversing route going from up, down, in this direction. Here you can see the, here we are, we are exposing the, the tear in the, in, in the disc by the, uh, the sector. And we start by taking out the disc material by the punches from here. Sometimes when you, you can, as you can see here, you have a, a fragment Cephalically uh, migrating, and you dissect the, the root from this is the cause of the pain, mainly here is the traversing root. And sometimes you have to, to use the, a knife to widen the opening in the annulus to take out the disc. You continue by using the, the punches, take out the disc material. And you use the, the, the sector to take out the uh, uh, escaping the fragment from the, the foramen, you can see here. And just, as I'm saying, uh, you continue on taking out your disc. Until you fully decompress the, the foramen and the traversing uh, route. Eventually you, you do some, you may do some hemostasis using gel foams and cotonoids, and some irrigation. And you end up with a decompressed framing with the... Uh, I'm going to, to go through the, the use of the endoscope for the, the fusion, the small short segment number fixation, but I would like to point out that for the far lateral or foraminal disc, it's, it's actually, it's very, uh, the results of this approach 
are very gratifying. Usually the, the patient uh, has a dramatic response to the pain relief and goes out from hospital the second day. And it's actually one of the very gratifying. Yeah, the the post-operative pain is minimal because it's mainly muscle muscle separation. You don't have bony much bony work, and it's it's uh, now I have a series of about fifteen or sixteen cases that I operated upon in the last three years using this technique, and actually I have very good results with them. Uh, in uh, the lumbar fixation. You know all, all the, the indications for a lumbar pedicular fixation, particular fixation for a short segment, whether you do the, the only pedicular fusion or the interbody fusion. In this technique, I'll show you what I'm doing for these cases for a single level. I do first the regular discectomy with the using the endoscope as I shown you before. And at the end of the surgery, when you have a good uh, disc compression, you, you just introduce the, the, the cage filled with, with bone to the uh, disc space under fluoroscopy. And then you do a, what you call a regular uh, percutaneous uh, particular fixation of the same level. And you end up with a decompressed level with uh, four, four screws and fusion in this level. Uh, sorry. These are some of my cases where I did the, this is pre and post-op, pre and post-op. Here I have to, so summarized the advantages of a minimal invasive disc surgery is that you have preservation of the function motion segment, the intervertebral loss and instability with a very short mm -hmm. hospital stay and quick recovery. Those operations have been performed on either an outpatient or overnight stay basis. I'll show you here some, not lumbar disc, but some other uh, techniques that I use using the endoscope for the spine. In this uh, video, first, sorry. In this video, you can see here in cases of uh, cervical disc prolapse, when you have a lateral disc herniation, you go, this is the posterior approach, you go to the posterior to the lamina using uh, the, usually here I use the uh, drills to drill out the lamina and part of the facet joint to uh, expose the nerve root and the disc material just lateral, lateral to it. And here you take it out piecemeal. Yeah. Take it out uh, completely using the rangers. You can see. As for the uh, dorsal spine, you go through a regular thoracoscopic approach. Uh, here we are removing a disc prolapse. And in this case, we, we remove the, the, the disc and did a, a fusion with using uh, uh, body, body, body screws and uh, rods. Uh, in cases of post disease, also it's a very good indication for endoscopic surgery, thoracoscopically. You go out and introduce and expose the the cold abscess by the endoscope, and you start by. Uh, opening up the, the, the abscess and draining the pus. Eventually you take out the, the granulation tissue and clean up the, this is all just, just a, a quick, uh, 
review of what you can do with the endoscope in the spine. Of course, here I would like to point out that the in in endoscopic surgery, what I have ex I I've, uh, described today is my experience with what we what is called down in the literature the endoscopic assisted surgery of the spine. Uh, I don't do, uh, and I don't have enough experience with the purely endoscopic surgery, uh, especially the, the transforaminal purely endoscopic or the interlaminal purely endoscopic. Actually, I have tried these, and I didn't feel very comfortable in doing these techniques, and that's why I abandoned them. But I know that some of my colleagues who are doing a purely endoscopic transforaminal surgery, they have very good results, and I'm sure they be able, more capable than myself to give you an idea. In any way, doing endoscopic surgery, here you do, the, you have to keep up that you are doing a minimal invasive procedure, but eventually you are doing the maximum effect and doing the job completely as here. And at, at last, I had, I'd like to say, uh, thank you very much again for having given me the time to give you a speech of, of my experience, what my experience, and please stay safe, stay home, and God bless you all, and God save you from the the pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Patu, for this uh, very interesting topic, uh, which uh, gave the uh, overview, an overview about uh, the uh, endoscopic technique in uh, lumbar spine surgery uh, out of uh, the lumbar disc herniation. Many indications, there are many indications of uh, uh, endoscopy in uh, lumbar spine surgery. You, uh, thank you for having for sharing your ex large experience with uh, Moroccan uh, neurosurgeons, Moroccan uh, colleagues. And uh, if uh, you agree, we will uh, have some questions, and uh, we have to uh, end this webinar, to finish this webinar in uh, uh, 30 uh, minutes half an hour. Uh, so uh, if there is, there is, is there any question in, uh, from the may, participants? May, may I have uh, to say one word? Yes, <laughs> yes Professor. <laughs> Hi, <Nigeria. laughs> Hi, how are you, Dr. Mustafa? Hi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful and uh, really very exhaustive uh, conference about uh, mini invasive surgery in lumbar spine. and. Uh, we all know that you are one of the experts in the uh, Arab world of this uh, kind of surgery and you are very innovative and uh, thank you so much and uh, welcome again, uh, uh, of course, uh, of the, on, on the on Arab society and we are very happy to have you uh, among us today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Najaya. It's a very, really an honor to be with you, uh, dear friends and colleagues and and I should love that, as they say. <laughs> Thank you very much. Stay safe. How it's Allah. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Is there any question in the professor? I think I have Do Do you hear me? Yes. 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 Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Ramadan Karim. Allah Akbar. Thank you very much, Professor Kod, uh, for this uh, nice presentation. I have two questions. Uh, the first one is about the neurosurgical residency program. Which type of these surgeries has to be uh, mandatory as a learning objective for the residents? In, uh, it depends, uh, of course, on the environment. Uh, and my second question is uh, about uh, converting to open surgery in your experience. Can you make some comment on that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. As for the, 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 the residency program, 
I don't think that endoscopic surgery of the spine is very much suitable for the, uh, except for the very senior residents. And then by that time, they, they only do a very small part of the, of the procedure. Because actually, the, the, what, what we do in endoscopic surgery, in the, the endoscopic assisted uh, uh, surgery, is basic, based on the microscope, on very vast experience on microscope. So what I believe that the first before going to do endoscopic surgery, uh, the resident should be mastering his techniques in the micro, microsurgery, first of all. And by the end of his residency or her residency, it, uh, they should be able to do uh, some part, especially the discectomy part of the, of the procedure, which is a bit easier because it's very difficult for uh, in, in a very small confined space as the endoscopic uh, uh, area where, where to have a good bearing on, the, uh, on your directions. And sometimes un, 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 unless you have a very good mentor to guide the, the resident in what to do and when to stop, it's very difficult to do it when you are still not mastering the, the, the microscopic techniques. But if you master the, 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 the microscopic techniques and with a good mentor, I believe that in, you need only less than 10 cases of uh, being um, assisted by a senior mentor before doing solo uh, endoscopic surgery in, in this case. And as for the, 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 the other question was uh, 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 converting to open surgery. Of course, in the early uh, stages of the learning curve, you tend to, to, to need to convert. Because it's, it's mainly a, a mental question. Uh, you have to convince yourself that I can do it all endoscopically. I don't have to, to convert. Sometimes, of course, in the, in the early stages, I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, I know that uh, the last time I needed to convert uh, to an open surgery was maybe 15 years or so uh, ago. Now, I, 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 it's, of course, I have also always, I have the, uh, the equipment for an open surgery ready with me in whatever surgery, but it's very, very rarely now that I need to, or, I don't, I, I, you don't usually, you don't need, after you master the technique, you, you exactly as, as for a, a one who's doing a microdiscectomy, for a, an experienced surgeon who does microdiscectomy, I think that the, the times that he needs to convert to an open surgery is very rare. Exactly the same. If you do, a, if you are an expert in endoscopic surgery, then, it's very, very rare that you need to go to open search. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Khadar? Yes? Yes. I, I can? Can give a yeah, question? Yes. yes, of course. You are the yes, boss. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are the big boss. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you again, uh, Professor uh, Khot, for this uh, very nice presentation. I have uh, some questions uh, first. Um, I think uh, all of us uh, start with open, with uh, conventional uh, disc uh, radiation uh, removal, then with uh, microsurgery, and uh, now uh, endoscopy. I think that uh, to avoid uh, some complications, uh, it needs some uh, learning curve. And uh, I would like to know how to, uh, to avoid this complication and about, what about management of this complication perioperatively and uh, maybe uh, postoperatively. Uh, thank you. I give uh, other questions uh, later. Okay. Thank you. The, 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 the major complications that you have in, in, in scopic surgery uh, are bleeding and ural tears. They, let's face it, those those are the two major complications that may be catastrophic to an endoscopic surgeon. 
bleeding in the, especially the epidural veins. Sometimes if the patient is too congested and the bleeding is too severe, you cannot have a dry enough field to, to operate on the patient. And this is one of the, of the complications that you have to avoid not to manage. You have to be able to avoid it completely, not to manage it. Because if, if it happens, uh, it will usually, it is, a, it ends with a catastrophic, and the, and, and, or you'll have to convert to open surgery to deal with. For the bleeding, first of all, you have to make sure that your patient has a very lax abdomen, a very lax abdomen so that you don't have uh, high intravenous pressure. And you have to have, uh, be able to use uh, pieces of patties and cotonoids to uh, uh, compress the um, epidural space before uh, doing the, the actual dissection of the, of the disc or the root. So you have to try to compress the epidural veins before injuring any of them so that they don't bleed. And if they do, you have to tilt, try to tilt the, the, the table to Trendelenburg position or a bit of Trendelenburg position to drain the, the venous blood out of your feet. But if you fail with all of these and with the use of gel foam in the epidural space to stop the bleeding, then of course you'll have to convert to open surgery. But if you, are, if you do strict maneuvers in relaxing the abdomen before you start your surgery and you anticipate the places where the bleeding might come and if you compress them with cotonoids before the bleeding starts, you, you can suddenly see the bleed. The other major complication is the dural tear. The dural tear uh, comes from uh, uh, some maneuvers that cause the bleeding, uh, the dural tear. One of them, of course, is the uh, uh, virus bands between the ligamentum flavum and the dura. If you don't do proper dissection of the ligamentum flavum before uh, taking it out, then you might have a, a linear tear of the of the of the of the dura, and the other thing, if you, if you um, while uh, using the, the rongeurs, the uh, pituitary rongeur or the carison rongeur, uh, if, you, if you don't see, if you don't visualize the, the, the root or the theca properly, you might uh, grab it with the rongeur and, and cut it. And this is, might be catastrophic because you might grab the, the nerve root with you and uh, avulse the root or cut it away. And this is only avoidable by very proper meticulous dissection. And you don't hold or pull out anything without properly seeing it. You have to be very patient. And there's your, make sure always and uh, make sure that you teach your, your residents and your uh, the, the people you, you are working with you that you are not in a race. You have to take your time. Uh, and uh, by taking your time, you are uh, uh, protecting your patient from harm. You have to take your time in proper dissection and proper visualization to prevent the, the dural tear and the bleed. As for the dural tear, if it is a small hole, you just cover it with a piece of gel foam and, uh, and cotonoid. You don't have to, to, uh, to patch it. It's, it's not, because in a, a very small confined space that's created for the discectomy, if you just cover the, 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 dura, the dural hole with a piece of gel foam, and when you close, the muscles will put an extra pressure on the gel foam, and that will prevent the dural tear from leaking CSF. Um, but if you have a very big tear, uh, and of course, this is a, a cause for converting into uh, open surgery, but 
However, you can sometimes manage this there by uh, meticulous drainage of the CSF and pushing back the roots inside the, the dura and also you patch it with pieces of gel foam and surge cell. And usually this is enough. Maybe you can add to it the a lumbar drain for a couple of days post-operatively. And in the rare cases where this type of tear happens, um, I, I haven't seen a, a problem with CSF uh, leakage from the wound as far as you properly cover it with gel foam and surgery cell. Um, this, are, this is, these are the main problems with, or complications, with of complications in doing endoscopic surgery. Of course, you have the complications of infection or one of the worst complications, I, in my opinion, is wrong level exposure. Um, because it's very easy when you go with the, with the tube of the endoscope, if you have a small angle, either cephalically or totally, you can go to a space up or below the level you are, you are hitting, you are, you are targeting. And in this case, you have always to check your level before doing the bony work or the ligamentous work. You have to check it with the fluoroscopy and always, the best, the best uh, guide that you are in the correct level is that you find the correct pathology. You are going to go, for, you are going to operate on a rupture disc. So when you expose and find rupture disc, you are definitely in the right space. Dr. Sudar. Yeah. You. Hello. Uh, next. Dr. Sudar. Uh, can I, I, yes, can I, I ask something? Professor Abadi and uh, Professor uh, Abadi, who raised uh, her hand, you want to Hello, ask a question, Professor Abadi? Nagay, okay, uh, Professor you're, Abadi, you are mute. Hello, okay. Yes, Professor Wahabi. Just for announce you that uh, we had just uh, a few minutes ago uh, a meeting with the AC uh, of WFNS, and we decided to. Uh, uh, put all our webinar organized till now by uh, Moroccan Society of Spine and Moroccan Society of Neurosurgery and Pan Arab Society and the website of the WFNS. You can, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, keep in touch with me and we will uh, put it in the website of WFNS. Thank you. Yes, Professor Wahabi. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mustafa, for uh, once again for uh, this nice presentation. I, I know, I remember you have uh, been in Marrakech 2005 for the World Congress. They have presented uh, uh, such uh, experience on, uh, on endoscopy uh, 25 years now, maybe. Uh, I, I have two, two uh, comments and a question. A comment, I totally agree that. Uh, uh, there is a learning curve and for the young uh, colleagues to start with microsurgery is very important to know their anatomy and then you, you can switch uh, progressively uh, to the endoscopic procedure, mainly for the uh, herniated disc. But it's not, uh, it's too dangerous to go through endoscopy for the first case right? and, and you, you show the complication. Uh, my question is, uh, do you prefer to uh, go for endoscopic approach for recurrence herniated disc? This is my question. Second is, uh, do you, are you convinced for uh, uh, multilevel uh, lumbar stenosis to use this technique? Thank you. <laughs> you have chosen. Thank you very much, Professor. I was happy for, for these very nice, nice questions. Um, you clarified very two important points, actually. Um, for the recurrent disc, uh, first of all, for the recurrent disc, I don't advise going endoscopically unless you have very good, clear bony landmarks in your CT that you can go to and dissect. But even so, the incidence of uh, 
neural tears and neural injuries in recurrent cases in the endoscopy is much higher than uh, I would I wouldn't advise doing recurrent cases in the um, in the regular endoscopic techniques. Here I would go for a, a foraminal approach to the uh, recurrent level rather than the regular midline skill approach. And even so, I think that microsurgery is superior to the endoscopy in these cases. As for the canal stenosis, I always advise the decompressive uh, surgery uh, in canal stenosis for a single or two level stenosis. But for more than two levels, the problem with the surgery here would be, of course, you can do proper decompression for two, three, or four levels. But the, the time of the surgery, the time taken by the surgery would be prohibitive. I mean, if you, if you usually do the, 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 the laminectomy, uh, two, three, or levels, three level laminectomy, usually an average surgeon will do in about half an, one and a half hours or, or two hours maximum. But uh, in endoscopy, you usually do the, same, the level one level in one, one and a half uh, hours. So if you do two levels, then you'll have about three hours. If you have three levels, you'll go for four and a half hours. So it's, 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 it becomes a very long surgery, very tedious. And uh, even for the surgeon, it's, if you go on working um, for five, six hours, doing a, a multi-segment surgery, you'll end up with losing some of your concentration out of fatigue in, in this surgery. Because even in, in one of the, the, the drawbacks of endoscopic surgery is that you, you cannot rely on a, an assistant to, put, to, to do part of the surgery. You, you do it actually skin to skin. Uh, <laughs> While in, in most of uh, regular surgery, if, if I do microdiscectomy, for instance, I usually uh, go after my assistant does the, the muscle separation and the, the retraction, and I just do the part of the laminectomy and the discectomy. While in endoscopic surgery, I start from going from the skin and till I end to the skin again. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Uh, Any other question? Yeah, can, can you hear me? Yeah. Dr. Magdi Gamel, how are you? Yes. From... <laughs> no, I don't, I don't I'm from Magdi Gamel, head of the Ancient University. Thank you very much. It was very yes. nice. So, uh, can I ask something? You said in the, in the, in the, in the presentation <laughs> that you tried the endoscopic surgery and then you, you, you decided to stop it, maybe because of the results. Can you tell me why you stopped it? Because I'm doing it for a long time and I would like to, to interact with you this uh, particular question. Why did you stop the from the previous endoscopic scale? I'm sorry. I'm sorry that the, the, so, the sound is not very... Uh, yes. Uh, Clear, but uh, I, I, I believe that what you said is that you are commenting on my stopping doing the, the yes, yes. lateral approach that I started yes. with. Ah. Yes, but I'm, do, yes. I'm doing this under local anesthesia for maybe the last 20 or uh, 12 years, and uh, it, it just needs some sort of a long learning curve. I agree with you, but I just want to hear from your uh, long experience in this. Well, I, I think there is a, some, a, some sort of confusion here or mix up between the, uh, the postulateral percutaneous discectomy that I started doing in 1995 yes. and the transforaminal endoscopic discectomy, which is okay. prevalent now. So okay. I, 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 what, what type of surgery are you doing? Are you doing the transforaminal endoscopic or yes. the Yes, uh, per, uh, fully, uh, yeah, don't fully endoscopic. Uh, the transforaminal. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, the transforaminal is definitely a safe technique. It's definitely a safe uh -huh. technique. 
I don't do it myself. I don't, I don't, I, di I didn't feel like, like doing it myself because okay. um, uh, I usually like to do, to use a big rongeur, a big, uh, a big carison. <laughs> And I didn't, <laughs> and I, I like to have a panoramic view of the, 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 the area I work in. And that's why I, okay. don't, I don't do the transform now. What, I'm, I, what I've, I've tried at the beginning and I stopped was the, the, the endoscopic, the percutaneous approach, which is more of a blind technique. You, you go uh, under fluoroscopic uh, guidance using guide wires to the posterolateral angle of the disc and you go inside intradiscal and you take it out. And I don't think okay. anybody is doing this technique anymore in, uh, anywhere in the world. But the, the transforaminal endoscopic surgery is definitely a safe technique. It needs a very steep learning curve, but definitely has a place in the, in the, in the, in the momentarium. Of okay, thank you. Now, uh... Question from uh, Muhammad Mansour Abid. Muhammad Mansour Abid. Muhammad Mansour. Uh, perhaps he's not. I think he has. He has the mic. His mic uh, is mute. Okay, and uh, El Fouti. I was uh, Mr. Al Khoti. He was raising uh, his hand, but I, I don't know. Hello, doctors. Uh, hello. 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 Oh, Ramadan Kareem, doctors. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Alan. Fine. Uh, Alan. Thank you for this meeting. Uh, it's, it's Unfortunately, you are, you are mute Would again for, for the sound, for the sounds, sound. I think there's some technical problem. Yes. 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 I think that you, you uh, can move to other. Uh... Uh, I don't see anyone who is raising uh, his hand. If you want to read the questions in the. Yeah, but, uh, no, I, have, I have a question. Professor Benoit, Benoit yes. is uh, raising his hand. Oh, you, nice lecture. Yeah. And it's a nice lecture. Thank you very much for this long experience. So when, when, when you go in and you encounter a calcified disc or very adherent disc, mm -hmm. some, sometimes when you have open surgery, you need osteotomes to crack it and go, go above more superiorly when you can free it and not, not uh, pull the nerve so much. Well, how do you deal with this when you do it with this code? Yeah. Yeah. This, this is very good, very good. Uh, here, when you have an, 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 um, uh, a calcified disc, you can also uh, introduce a small gouge to, to and, uh, uh, do a hammering of the, of the, of the osteophyte, uh, or you can use a, a, a drill. Uh, to drill out the the calcified part of, of course it's only it's only usually it's only just a shell covering the the disc material it's not all it's not calcified all through when you have a, uh, you just you just drill out the the osteophyte using the the drill and then you, you just uh, evacuate the disc from from with it it's 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 difficult but it's uh, doable it's, it's, it's not impossible to deal with it. So uh, I've ch I've seen a change in my practice when I practice. I had patient more from the emergency room before. They were soft disc and they are easier to re re resect. Now now the patient wait one year, one year and a half, 
and, and sometimes you don't expect it. Maybe it's a bit black on the MRI, but you, you, you oversee it or you're not really sure. And then, and then inside I've seen horrible calcified through to front to back disc, not just a shell. So I had the, we need an assistant to retract the nerve and then having two hands to work with the osteotome and, 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 and the drill, I don't feel, I don't, I'm a bit worried sometimes to put it in around the nerves like so, so deep like this, but uh, thank you very much for your answer. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank goodness I, I haven't seen such a horrible disc too far. But I, I'm, I'm sure if I if I have one of these, I'll have to convert to open search. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Doctor Hisham Tahir. Is he still here, Doctor Hisham Tahir? Please. Is uh, Dr. Hakku, do you have, do, could you read these uh, questions uh, in the conversations? I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I have to comment that I'm, I'm really very, very happy with the, seeing many of my uh, friends and colleagues here. And one of, actually, one of my students, uh, Dr. Mohammed Fathallah in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I'm very happy to see him here you know, with us now. <laughs> so, okay, uh, thank you. Professor uh, Khadab. Yes. Is there any other question I can, uh, I can, yeah, Mr. I can ask a question? Benzak yes, after Benza, Mr. Benzagmut, Mohammed. Okay. Mohammed. Hi, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum. Uh, thank you so much for your interesting conference. I would now uh, to I would like to know uh, uh, if you have uh, experience about uh, the removal of uh, spinal dural lesion using endoscopic uh, endoscopic approach solely. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, I have done a couple of cases of epidural masses and one uh, neurofibroma. Uh, I have done these. For epidural masses, epidural, or epidural hematoma or abscess or something like that, it's easy to drain it from the using the endoscope. But for uh, an, an epidural and intradural mass, it's very difficult. And I don't advise actually doing intraoperative, uh, intradural surgery using the endoscope because of the very confined space. Uh, I've, I've done it, but I don't, I, don't, I, I don't intend to do it again. I don't plan to do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Hilmani. Yes, thank you again. I, I, I would like to, uh, to, to ask about uh, a surgical concept. When we operate with conventional or microsurgical approach, we have some concept. Mm. But uh, uh, with endoscope, there is the same concept or uh, a surgeon must have other concepts. Yes. Well, uh, actually, for for me, for me, I've started uh, endoscopic surgery based on my experience in microsurgery. So it's it's more of the same concept, but in in a smaller scale. Uh, uh, but uh, the the only thing that uh, it's it's more of the combination of microdiscectomy and chopstick surgery. It's, I mean, if you, if you do endoscopic transnasal surgery, for instance, it's very similar in, in, in technique and the use of your hands, like the endoscopic lumbar disc surgery, because then you'll have to have your, both your hands in very close to each other and doing what what call the chopstick surgery. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of uh, uh, first difficult to do, but uh, if after doing some cases, you just do it automatically. You don't have to think about it. So it's it, the, the main concept here, I think, is that you, you want to do the whatever you can do by open surgery, or by microsurgery, micro but you do it here in a by using a smaller 
uh, incision and the smaller wound to do less uh, soft tissue damage. This is the, the main concept of my, my uh, endoscopic discectomy. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, uh, Yasin Yashu is still with us. Yes, my question, thank you so much for this produ productive presentation. My question is a continuation uh, about the, the residency program question. I just want to ask about uh, the concept of simulation in otoscopy, like to get familiar with the anatomy at least. What do you think? Uh, what, do you th what do I think about what? Uh, about the simulation in otoscopy, using simulation technique for learning. Stimulation technique? Yes. Simulation. Simul Yes, simulation. Yeah, simulation. Yes, uh, uh, here, here, I believe yes. For for, for before uh, doing endoscopic surgery on a human uh, on a real patient, one should first start by doing some simulatory surgeries on models using the endoscope, so, yeah, like the simulation of. Uh, moving one, uh, some uh, peas from one place or another, or uh, doing some cutting or uh, under the, the endoscope in a box. And I usually, I, 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 I don't have actually a good animal lab, but if I do, I think I, I, would, I would encourage my, my, my residents to operate using the endoscope on a dog or a sheep before uh, doing it on, on a human being. But at least you, you do some simulation by you know, on a, a, a box or something like that to just, just be, take the feeling of using the endoscope and operating on using the, a monitor in front of you. Yes. Okay, Dr. Fatshallah. Good evening. Good evening, Professor Rodin. Hello, oh, Muhammad. Ramadan Kareem, my friend. Allah uh, Akbar. As a as a fellow of you, sir, uh, I'd like to ask ask you about something. Uh, what do you think is the main contraindication in the preoperative imaging for endoscopic techniques, sir? Ah. Well, uh, there is. No absolute contraindication for endoscopic surgery other than those for microsurgery. An absolute, an absolute contraindication for endoscopic surgery is that of a, is an absolute contraindication for microdiscectomy. But there are some relative contraindications that I don't advise to have uh, endoscopic surgery. First of all, as I said before, the recurrent cases, I don't advise doing by endoscopy. Uh, the bilateral cases, if you have bilateral, if you need to do bilateral evacuation of the disc, uh, I, I don't advise doing it endoscopically. If you have more than two or three levels maximum for decompression or discectomy, then this is another relative contraindication for search. These are the, the, the main contraindications. Even sir, the, the, the patient is uh, very old or, ha or has multiple comorbidities. The freehand technique. Uh, a patient, a patient with with multiple com comorbidities or very old, uh, if he has a single level, uh, then it's all right to do it with uh, endoscope because then the the time factor is not much enlarged using the endoscopy. But if you have multi-level pathology in a patient with comorbidities or who is uh, 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 medically compromised, then I wouldn't advise to do it endoscopically for the time factor of the surgery. Thank you, Professor. Thank, Thank you. you for the nice presentation. Very pleased to see you in good health. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dr. Hisham Tahir is still with us. Hisham Tahir. Is there any, uh, I don't see. Uh, Jamal, Dr. Jamal Dardour. Yes. Yes, sir, I'm still with you. Do, uh, thank you, Dr. Mustafa. 
Dr. Mustafa. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yes, you can ask uh, Professor Mustafa. Okay. Very short question. I know it's time for uh, star now. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think the amount of discectomy uh, surgery, the amount of disc removed, and if the disc uh, bulging out? Thank you. Well, usually you take out the same amount of disc as you do in a micro discectomy or a, 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 an open uh, uh, open discectomy. It's, 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 yeah, actually, you take it exactly exactly the same amount. Okay, thank you. you. The concept of removing only the bulging part of the disc only. No, I do, I do, I do all the degenerated part of all the degenerated disc, whether uh, bulging outside or from the intradiscal space. Uh, I think this this reduces uh, recurrences. If you if you if you remove as much of of the degenerated disc as you can. Thank you. Thank you. There is two questions from the audience for the. Professor Wahabi, so, and uh, then Dr. Mahdi Heku wants to say, uh, uh, perhaps to read the questions from the audience. Yes, yes Professor Wahabi. Yes, uh, yeah, Dr. Mustafa, we, when we compare the result of uh, microsurgical removal of disc and uh, endoscopic removal of disc, we, we don't find any big difference uh, regarding the results on pain and the results and the incidence of recurrence. What is your main advantage of using endoscopy? Yes, this is what I, what I always tell my patients, is um, that the end point of treatment is the same, whether you do microscectomy, endoscopic discectomy, or even open discectomy, the end point is the same. The, the, the main difference is in the early post-operative uh, uh, period. The, the, the main advantage of doing more less invasive techniques is that you have uh, quicker recovery. So if you if you if the patient needs a couple of weeks after microscopy to return to normal life in endoscopic, then it would be about one week. It's usually shorter post-operative recovery and shorter return to uh, uh, normal life. But uh, eventually, after three months, I would say, all types of sur surgery for this prolapse will end up, if you do it properly, then you'll end up with the same results. Okay, so uh, Dr. Haku? Okay. Yes. Yeah, there is two, two questions about uh, CSF leak yes. from the audience. How do you deal with the intraoperative CSF leak? And the second question is uh, the same. How would you like now the incidence of uh, CSF uh, fistula and how to manage them, endoscopic or uh, conventional? Okay. First of all, I've, 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 uh, I think that I've covered this, uh, this uh, point before. Is usually CSF leak would, would, would result from a, a, a dural tear intraoperatively. And in, in my experience, if, uh, if you have a small tear, a small hole, you just cover it intraoperatively with a piece of gel foam. If you have a bigger, a bigger tear, you try also to cover it with gel foam, with multi layers of gel foam, and you do a lumber, a lumber drainage for a few days post-operatively. And uh, uh, I, this is my experience because I, I, I haven't, I ha actually I haven't seen CSF leakage for, for quite some time now from in my patients, but uh, in my experience it's very good to have an, a continuous lumbar drainage for a few days uh, until the, the, the wound is dry enough to, to heal. Thank you. If there is a there's another answer. question, do you do you accept the concept of removing only the bulging part of the disc only? 
No, I, I, I believe that uh, it's better to remove all the degenerated parts of the, uh, of the nucleus uh, to prevent uh, recurrence of the disc again. And uh, there is a question you, you have already answered, but uh, I, I can. Uh, uh, do you think, Sir, there is difference in uh, the amount of uh, removed disc material between endoscopic and conventional surgery? No. This is the same uh, uh, question uh, from uh, uh, Professor Webb. Uh, uh, so it's, it's, uh, you always you, you remove the same amount of disc, whether you do it by any technique. Okay, if there is uh, no other questions, I, uh, and I again, I thank uh, Mr. Professor Mustafa Khot for sharing his uh, great experience in this field with the Moroccan neurosurgeons. And uh, I uh, wish you uh, good uh, health and uh, stay, uh, stay safe uh, in this uh, period. And uh, I hope we will get uh, other and others occasion to share uh, our experience with uh, Egyptian uh, colleagues. And now, uh, uh, may I ask uh, Professor Hilmani or Dr. Haku, the members of the official board of the society, to give a few words. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, nice uh, presentation and nice discussion. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Khadab, for. Uh, is a very nice uh, moderation. And uh, I would like to, uh, again, to thank uh, our uh, speaker for this uh, very informative uh, conference and uh, for uh, sharing his uh, great experience about uh, spine endoscopy. I think uh, between the beginning and the end of the 19th century, uh, this sectomy uh, has uh, experienced uh, many, uh, many advantages and many uh, evolution since uh, conventional microdiscectomy and now uh, endoscopy. Uh, I think, uh, but uh, between uh, experienced hand surgeon, the, uh, the result is the same. But uh, I think the challenge is the learning curve and our, our job, our task uh, as a scientific uh, society and faculty is to shorten this, uh, this learning curve to give a, a better view to our young surgeon. Uh, so uh, many thanks to all participants uh, who has uh, who were uh, more than 100 worldwide. Thanks to Professor Lakhdar, thanks to uh, Dr. Hakko, and uh, I say you uh, good, uh, good end of this week and good job, and see you for uh, more and more experience. Thank you very much. Thank you, for Professor Lehimani. Thank you, Professor Khot, for this uh, excellent presentation. Thank you for uh, all the participants. I just uh, want to inform the, all the participants that uh, our uh, next uh, uh, webinar is uh, in French, uh, speaking with uh, Professor uh, Fuentes, Stefan Fuentes, about who would like to share with us his experience about uh, minimally invasive uh, surgery for uh, uh, traumatic, uh, traumatic uh, spine. Thank you. So, sorry, okay, may, may, I, may I ask something? Because I, I saw one comment uh, about the certificate for the, some webinar. Some, uh, yeah. Yeah, some, some participants ask ab about this certificate. Maybe we can uh, uh, prepare for, uh, for us who uh, wanted uh, it, uh, to, this certificate. I think it's a Maybe it's yes, a good yes, question. all right. We have yes, we, uh, we are uh, agree with you. We have uh, already uh, thinking this uh, um, to this option, and we, I uh, talked about uh, Dr. Mehdi to prepare this uh, this certificate, inshallah. And uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Lakhdar, would you uh, announce uh, other uh, yes. information? 
uh, about yes uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we have this and uh, the Moroccan Society of Neurosurgery uh, yes organized uh, organized uh, the first webinar with uh, in collaboration with uh, the French speaking and the Pan Arab Society of Neurosurgery tomorrow at uh, two past um, 12 and uh, with Professor uh, Sebastian Frolich about the uh, petroclival meningioma. So, uh, welcome if you uh, wish to participate to our uh, webinar. Thank you. Okay, and thank you. The Professor Frolich, he, uh, he asked us to uh, uh, put this uh, the seminar under the the hospice of the, com the committee, WFS committee of skull base that he will, that he, he is the, ch the co-chairman of this committee. Yes, it's wishable to do it. Thank you. And thank you very much for Thank you. Thank you. See you, inshallah. Thank you.